Hi, I'm Karen Wright, Managing Director of Parachute Executive Coaching, and I'm here today again with one of our short videos introducing some of our fantastic coaches to prospective clients, and we are here today with Jane Gaynor. Hi, Jane. Hello, Karen. How are you? I'm great. Nice to see you. You as well. Thanks for having me. Oh, listen, I'm so delighted to have these conversations. It's so much fun um, because I know all of you pretty well, and it's just fun to be able to kind of introduce you to the world in a little bit of a bigger way. So. Um, so how long you've been a coach now? Coach, uh, 2013. So I'm coming on 10 oh, man. years, how exciting. which is crazy to think of. Oh, yes. I know. And you've done so much in 10 years. We're going to hear all about that in a second. Um, and you've been on the parachute team for roughly how long? Just three, two or three years. Yeah. Thereabouts. You know yeah. what? It was pre COVID. Everything is oh. either pre or post COVID. <laughs> so I'm going to mark it at three years. Oh, goodness. I know. And that's really the thing, right? You think, oh, it was just last year. No, I know it was before. Anyway, so I totally get that. Um, can you tell me why coaching? I know you had a corporate career prior to doing this. And so just what is it about coaching that drew you and why does it matter to you? Yeah, you know what? I love that question. And I love when clients ask me that because the reason I do this is because I did. I had an executive coach when I was in the corporate world and it was life changing. It, um, it was the first time that I actually had the opportunity to learn about myself and my own leadership style. And I think about the impact it had on me personally, professionally, for my team, et cetera. And so I remember when I decided to be a coach, I kept thinking, I want to have that impact. I can't be my coach. We are all, we all have our own unique style. Yet mm -hmm. I wanted to have the impact that he had on me. I wanted to give to others, I want people to know that they can be authentically them. Of course, being mindful of who the audience is. And being authentic doesn't give you the right to say and do whatever you want, whenever you want. Um, but it's about knowing who you are and being that calm, confident, grounded leader that you truly want to be and others will really appreciate. Nice. But I love that bit about authentic doesn't mean just saying whatever you want, whenever you want, but it doesn't mean being something you're not. Right. right. So, and there's such an important distinction there that I think all of the buzz about authenticity has maybe been misunderstood and kind of taken a bit of a left turn. So I, uh, I love bringing it back to, no, this is about who you are really at your core. I'm so happy you said that because I do, I think authentic leadership is one of those catchphrases. Really how I would describe authentic leadership is values-based leadership. Right. Knowing your values and being grounded in your values allows you to be your authentic self. Nice. Yes, totally agree. Nice distinction. Um, so what is your, how would you describe what's unique about you as a coach or maybe better yet, what have clients said is unique about you as a coach? Oh, that's funny. Ironic timing because I literally just had a wrap up session with somebody who I've been working with for a year and it was a little bit of a pun, but he said, Jane, thank you for helping me find my edge. And <laughs> I have grown. And I thought, it was a really lovely conversation about where are you and where are you at now? And another analogy, another client that actually just wrapped up too, she described it that when she started working with me, she thought that there was this hole and we were going to identify all of these things to fill the hole. Oh. And after working for, uh, she's now coming up on a year as well. Her comment was, Jane, I didn't have a hole. What I needed to find out is I needed to find out who I was. So her new analogy is that I feel like I have a backpack and I am walking down this path and I have all of these tools and I have the option to take out whichever tool is best to use at that time. Nice. And so it's interesting how people come into coaching with one perspective of, yeah. oh, coaching is going to fix me. We're oh. not going to fix you. We really want to work with you mm -hmm. to figure out who you are and how can you be more you authentically, genuinely every day and use some different tools to get you where you want to be. Oh, that's really so cool. lovely. But isn't it sad when people start by thinking they're broken? Yes. There's so much about the systems, whether it's the education system or the you know performance management system that, that leads people to think that they're broken if they're not fitting in or doing things the way somebody else thinks they should be doing them. So that's lovely. I love the backpack analogy. I had a client one time tell me that, um, that he came into coaching thinking that a coach was like a shrink and he left coaching understanding that a coach is a stretch. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I loved it too. 
I like that. And yeah. I've also had them refer to coaching as therapy. Jane, you're like my therapist. And I'm like, it may feel therapeutic, right? but it's exactly. definitely not therapy. And no, agreed. Yeah. yeah coaching yeah. is something different. It, it, it really is a connection between two people. Mm -hmm. And if um, I know you're going to be talking to Dominic too, one of Dominic's lines that I love is hold the other person capable. Yes. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. I and imagine how it, like I know and 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 think about for yourself how does that feel when someone holds you capable? Yes. Right. There's such trust in that that it's it's really special. It Thank is. You. So as a coach holding our coaches capable, as a leader holding our team capable, mm -hmm. as a parent holding our children capable. Like I really find there's so many ways, like there's things we learn in coaching that really are applicable to life. Yeah. And my kids are old enough that they're just now starting to appreciate it where there was a period of time where maybe, maybe somewhat less so. <laughs> I know you get that. <laughs> I do. So what are you doing these days to one of the, one of the things I love about all the members of our parachute team is that everybody is always taking a course, learning something new, reading something, listening to something. So what are you doing these days to support your own growth and development? Yeah, I do. I think books and podcasts are fantastic. Being an extrovert, I really enjoy other people. And so being part of like, and I think we've talked about this with the parachute group is because we're so diverse, we learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And there's another coaching community that I'm part of. And so I love working with other coaches because we all bring so many different things and that opportunity to learn and grow from each other, I think is incredible. Yeah, it really is. It continues to amaze me how the group gives to each other and shares what they're learning and the level just seems to be rising all the time. Um, what else would you like us to know about you as, as a human being beyond, beyond the coach? Oh, I love that. Yeah, because we are human beings. Uh, as a human being, uh, if I think about, yeah, um, things that I might be proud of made is what I'm thinking when you ask me that question. What am I proud of? I'm proud of my two boys. Mm -hmm. I, I am so grateful to have two amazing, amazing boys, 19 and 21, which is very scary to say that out loud. So on a personal note, they are, they're a big reason of what I do, what I do. I want to be, um, I want to be a great mom. And so that's part of it. Um, and then on a personal side too, I'm hiking the Bruce trail. Oh, <gasps> The whole thing. So the whole thing. So I'm so, yeah. So the whole thing, meaning from Niagara Falls to Tobamori. Wow. So I've got three hikes left. My cousin and I have been doing this for almost four years wow. and it is going to be my first athletic accomplishment. So I'm pretty proud of myself. It's sort of the Canadian equivalent of the Camino, right? Yes. You know, it, and it's, uh, and it's stunningly beautiful. I mean, I haven't done the whole thing but I've certainly done parts, but oh, that's a great project, a great quest. Love it has that. been fantastic. It's been great exercise. It's been a beautiful way to see Ontario because walking along the escarpment mm -hmm. for 900 kilometers, you just get to see parts of Ontario that are completely untouched. Oh, I and it's, it's great time with my cousin. We get five or six hours, sometimes seven hours, depending on how long the hike is. <laughs> that, that is great therapy. If we want to talk about <laughs> therapy, <laughs> that is some great therapy. I love it. Will you get the three hikes done by the end of the summer? Yes, we will be done Labor Day weekend. Oh my God. So when we cross and we touch that Kern in uh, Tobermory, it will be a huge celebration for us. Oh my gosh. We'll make sure you uh, share it with us next time we have a monthly meeting. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Very cool. Thank well, you. thank you so much. I am so delighted that you're part of the team and I appreciate you taking a few minutes with us here today. Oh, Karen, it is a privilege to be part of your team. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.